Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here. We thank you that we are alive in you. Thank you, Lord, that we can release a sound to you. Thank you, Lord, we rise up in our authority this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Break down the walls. Push back.
Rakata Satara Babosa. Yara no Satara the Bosatara Bose. Yeah Baba Baba Saba Baba Sora Baba Katasa. You know ankle deep is okay sometimes. Baba Baba Saboro Rasakata Baba Boso. Knee deep is okay sometimes. Baba so rababa kata sa sa baba. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Waist deep is okay sometimes. Ya baba so rababa kata sa. Baba ba sa baba baba sa. Baba ba sa. But we sung a song that said, Immerse me. The song said, Immerse me. Holy Spirit, take me all the way under right now. In Jesus' name, step in all the way. Uh uh-uh. uh. We not stopping that ankle deep. We not stopping that knee deep. We not stopping that waist deep. Come on, Lord. Come on. Step on into this thing. Step on in right now in Jesus' name. Let him overflow you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Lean in and receive the goodness of our God today. Lean in and receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Lean in and receive your breakthrough right now. Immerse yourself in the spirit. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. All the way in. All the way in. All the way. All the way. All the way. Don't stop now. Lean in. Lean in. Press in right now. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough. Thank you for the breakthrough, Lord. We're all the way in, Lord. That's where the breakthrough comes. That's where the breakthrough comes. That's where the breakthrough comes. Hallelujah. Come on, Sora Bagatasa. Boro Sora Bagatasa. Come on, Sora Bagatasa. Come on, Sora Bagatasa. Come on, Sora Bagatasa. Yes, Sakara Bo Sara Bo Sara Bo Se. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you love us so much and you care for us so much God you're a good good father <laughs> we love you Lord we adore you Lord and we thank you Lord hallelujah 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 in the house <laughs> now can you give him some crazy crazy Holy Ghost praise up in this place
you, Lord. God is so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. There's just a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. The Holy Spirit is doing some things this morning. He's doing what he does. Hallelujah. everybody <laughs> I want to say welcome to Sunday morning service amen <laughs> to our online guests I want to say welcome to you too <laughs> but come on kick off your fuzzy slippers throw off them silk pajamas and come on down because the spirit is moving fine and well up in here amen <laughs> amen so on behalf of Pastor Louie and Pastor Sandra, I want to welcome you today. I am Mark Wright. I'm the director of the First Impressions Ministry, and it's such a joy and a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I do have a couple of announcements for you and requests and suggestions. So uh, my first one, if you're a first-time visitor, if today is your first time um, in our midst or you've been gone for a while, and you find yourself, you could have been anywhere else in the world, amen? But today, you're here with us. If that's you, if you're a first-time guest, can you raise your hand? Our most excellent ushers have a little card for you. And, oh, thank you. Welcome into the house today, amen? Let's give our guests a hand, amen? Amen. Please fill out that little card. And if you see me running around after service, pull your coattail on me, Amen. <laughs> I'd like to say hello and give you a personal welcome, but on behalf of the entire congregation, welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, you can please, for our guests, if you're visiting virtually, you can go to harborchristiancenter.org and fill out a form. And, you know, we want to reach out and get some special love to you, but we need to have that information to connect. So please feel free or please fill out those cards so that we might uh, be in contact and try to catch up with me a little later on. Amen. Um, our announcement. Can you say 21 days of fasting and praying? Woo, amen. Amen. We're about one third through, and boy, some powerful breakthrough have taken place already. Um, but we will be continuing through January 27th. We have one hour prayer Sunday through Friday night. So tonight, come on down because it's going to be jumping off in here with some prayer. Amen. Amen. Right here in the main sanctuary. We have prayer booklets in the back that are available, and it's going to give you the guidelines. And also online, if, if you're one of our online guests and you're following along, um, 
go online, pick up your booklet, and uh, you know what? There's no distance in prayer, so you can be in, in Saudi Arabia or Antarctica, amen, and still, I mean, the world is great with this technology. They can, they can chime in all over the world. So uh, go ahead and plug in, and we will see you tonight. Uh, meet the pastor. Uh, for those who are new, if you are new, let me tell you, we have an awesome, awesome pastoral staff, and our senior pastor, Pastor Louie, He's out of sight. <laughs> All right. So we are going to have a Meet the Pastor Sunday, January 28th. So if you're new to the ministry, after both morning services, come on out and meet our pastor in the courtyard and some of our other leaders right under the Welcome Center. Amen? Champions Club's Resurrection. Can you say Champions Club? Amen. Champions Club is a new extension of our Harbor Kids that serves kids with special needs. So starting in February, Champions Club will meet in Ethan's room, formerly the West Fellowship Hall. Amen? And that's during the 11 o'clock service on Sundays. Now, in order to best serve this unique needs of each child, we ask that all kids be registered in advance in the website. Because those special needs, that's just it. They have special needs. And we need to understand what those special needs are so that we can minister to them effectively. Amen. And this ministry touches my heart. I had a good friend who had a special needs child. And he, he could never go to church with me because my previous churches, they did not have this. And so this is very dear, near and dear to my heart. Amen. Logos, letters to inmates. Uh, if you have a loved one who is currently incarcerated, um, we would like to send a copy of Pastor Louis' awesome messages and notes to him or her every week. That is a tremendous blessing. Amen. And it lets them know that we love them and we have not forgotten about them. So please give us their mailing address by filling out the form on our website or by calling Vivian at the church office. Amen? Amen. We are a church family, so we celebrate those special days in everybody's lives. We have some birthdays this morning. I'm going to get it right today, family. Hang on with me, okay? All right. We have Andre Bedford. Happy birthday. We have Connie Garcia. Happy birthday. William Humphreys, happy birthday, William. Amen. And Madison Jones, happy birthday to each and every one. Amen. And we have happy anniversary. We're celebrating 144 years of combined bliss. Go ahead with yourselves. Amen. So happy anniversary to Michael and Ann Baker. 37 years. I'm sorry. Happy anniversary. That's a birthday. All right. Um, happy anniversary to David and Sonia Saliata. <laughs> Uh, happy anniversary to Chuck and Ivory Horton, 34 years. All right. And our heavyweights today, they're all heavyweights, but these are 44 years. Wow. Robert and Debbie Torres, happy birthday. Thir 44 years, amen? And at this time, it's time to put our hearts and our minds together as we prepare for our offering. And you know... God has been good to me last year in 2023. He was good to me in 2022. He was good to me in 2021. You know what he's going to be do to me in 2024? He's going to be good to me in 2024. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And his word is true. You know what? I double dare, dare you to try him and see. Tithing works. Amen. I take my 90 minute sit, he breaks me up, blows me up, and keeps the devil at bay. Get back, devil. Amen. So I encourage you, um, get on God's plan for prosperity, which is tithing. And if you can stand with me, we have a declaration that we would like to say together that we as a church family, that we know that God is moving, amen, in our midst with our finances. So at the count of three, can you repeat with me, please? One, two, three. As we receive today's tithes and offerings, we declare, because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthrough. Amen. So that, please feel forward to come forward and bless God with your offering.
Why don't we all stand to our feet this morning, amen? Can you give Jesus a great big hand clap? He's worthy of our praise, amen. And uh, I just want to encourage you, amen. I was thinking as they were uh, leading us in worship about knee deep, ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. Hey, you know what? You need to get in the pool where you can't feel the bottom, amen? Just get in the deep end. And just, just enjoy the presence and the power of God. You know, I, I don't know about you. I'm not a very great swimmer. I usually stay in the shallow end, amen. But when it comes to the Spirit of God, I want to dive right in, amen. I want to I want to I want to test the water. I want to enjoy the water. I want to I want to just enjoy the presence of God. And I believe that's what we've done this morning, amen. But don't stay in that shallow end, amen. Get in the deep end with God, amen. But I want to thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for joining the family. Uh, of God today. And I want to pray for just a couple of needs. I'm going to ask you to join me. Happy anniversary, guys. You guys are here in church. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. Uh, I want to pray for Mark, uh, Nelma, Mark, Mark, Nelma Hernandez's son. Uh, he's got a really weak immune system. He's the one that was in a uh, terrible traffic, a car accident several years ago, was in a coma, and God brought him out of coma and stuff. He's been in, in a lot, a lot, it's been a long road for him, but um, he has a very weak immune system, and uh, he had a little bout with asthma, so his lungs are really weak right now. So I want to pray for Mark this morning. I also want to pray for Alicia Williams, uh, was taken to the hospital yesterday. They're running some tests on her, just trying to figure out some, some heart issues there. For uh, Yuli Lopez's dad on Friday was in a coma. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I want to pray for her dad today. And then two, two dads that passed away, I want to pray for Richard Lopez. That's Martha's husband uh, over in, um, in Mexico. His dad passed away, so they're traveling uh, over there. And then also for Steve, your, your, dad, your dad passed away over in Arizona. I want to pray for Steve and the Metali family. And then a praise report, our brother Darren, uh, Darren DeMello had surgery on Friday, came home on Friday, is doing well and recovering well, so we praise God for that. And um, I'll let him tell you the story. I, came, I, I text back an LOL when he told me, but uh, he had a, a, a small tumor removed, and, and God is just so good. It's just, God is so amazing. And uh, I don't want to give it up, but um, he'll let him tell his story, amen. And then I want to pray for the cards. If you look over here on the cross, every card represents a person, a situation, a circumstance, a marriage, a relationship, a, sick, a sickness. It all represents people, amen. So we're going to pray uh, for the cross. So will you join me and just stretch your hand toward the cross as we're praying. So Father, we thank you this morning for not just ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, but God, take us into the deep end today, God. We want to go in the deep end, God. And we just pray for these needs, God. We lift up Mark before you. I thank you for the miracle that he already is, God. He, that, God, you, are, you started something in him. And we declare that you're going to complete that miracle in his life. You're not done with him, God. You're doing a work. You started a work. You're doing a work. And you're going to finish the work. So we specifically pray for his lungs right now. And God, I just this morning reverse the confession that he has a weak immune system and we declare that his immune system is strong, his immune system is restored, his immune system is put back together and God it's because of your hand and your work in his life God in Jesus name so we pray for his lungs for the strengthening of his lungs for the oxygen level and everything that needs to happen in Mark's life, God, in Jesus' name. Pray for Alicia this morning, whatever's going on there. I thank you that you're her doctor, you're her physician. God, you uh, give the doctors the wisdom they need to figure it out. But God, we thank you that she is in your hands and you're her healer, you're her doctor, in Jesus' name. For Yuli's dad, whatever's happening there, I pray just the power and the presence of Jesus in his room. God, whatever's going on there, God, that you would move and that you would just in a supernatural way intervene in Yuli's dad's life right now in Jesus' name. For these two families, the Lopez, the Metali family, God, that are um, going through this season of losing their dad. I just pray for the peace of God that surpasses understanding. I pray for the comforter, Holy Spirit, all the questions in our minds and all the, all the emotions that we go through and, and uh, everything that comes with losing someone we love. 
I just pray for these two families, God, your strength, your power, your comfort, God. Pray for the Lopez's as they're traveling back and forth, God, that you keep them safe. God, you take them there and you bring them back safe and just give them everything they need in this difficult season of their life. God, we thank you for that. And um, God, we praise God for Darren. Thank you for the testimony and the story of your healing power upon him in Jesus' name. And we pray for this cross, God. We pray for every name, every person, God. I thank you that you know us. You know the number of hairs on our head. You know our address. You know our aliases. You know everything about us, God. Our first name, our last name, our middle name, and whatever they called us, God. You know everything about every single person on that car, on those cards, God. And we just pray for the miracle power of Jesus. Come on, church. Can you help me pray for these cards? We believe you for miracle signs and wonders, God. For salvation to come. For healing to come. For restoration to come. Father, for finances to come. We pray, God, for breakthrough. Get them to the other side, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We just plead the blood of Jesus over this cross and over every person. And they're pinned to the cross because the answer is in the cross, God. The cross of Jesus. The cross of Calvary, God. And so we thank you for it. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Come on, say that with me, God. Say, God, we thank you for miracles, for signs, and for wonders, God, from these cards. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. And we all say together, amen and amen. Give Jesus another great big hand. Thank you, guys. You may be seated uh, this morning. Uh, Praise God. Tonight, uh, as Mark shared, I want to personally invite you uh, to come out and join us for one hour of prayer. Tonight we start our second week. Amen. So awesome. I was kind of tempted to say this, and I'm going to say this just as a joke. Amen. So don't take me serious, but I, I, I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to tell your neighbor, don't mess up my blessing by eating at in and out this afternoon. No, just kidding, just kidding. It's a total joke. It's a total joke, guys. Because God honors whatever you sacrifice to him, whether it's food, whether it's music, whether it's social media, whether it's watching TV, whatever you're doing is good and it's awesome. And I just encourage you to do something, amen? And, and that was a total joke, amen? That was a total joke. So uh, I just love to make you laugh, amen? That's it. But tonight, invite you out. Tonight's target is the church, amen? It's the church. So I'm super excited about that. But before I move on here, um, funeral services for Ann Rubio, that's Teresa Hernandez's mom, and uh, are going to be this Saturday at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and uh, there will be a reception uh, immediately following the service, and so as we normally do, we ask you guys to help us out with the family's reception time. And uh, we asked if you could help us with salads and desserts. So this is for um, Memorial Sir Anne Rubio was a it was a soul. I think she still is a soloist. She is a soloist. Uh, sang here at the church. Beautiful voice. Beautiful lady. Always just a sharp lady. If you knew Anne Rubio, she was a, a sharp lady. She always called me Mijo too. So that's that's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing when somebody gives you that title. But she is now in the heavenly choir singing in the presence of God. And so her service is this uh, Saturday. So how many can help us out with the dessert on a Saturday? If we could get the chapel lights on, uh, dessert on Saturday. Drop-off time is about 1030 in the morning. And uh, anybody in the chat? All right, I see your hand back there. Hand, hand, hand. Great, guys. How about in here? A couple more dessert. I mean, salads. Great, great, great. Two more, maybe two more. Can I get two more? God bless you in the back. God bless you. Perfect. Amen. How about who can help us out with the dessert? A dessert for um, Saturday. It doesn't have to be homemade, but uh, it could be from Costco. Yes, yes. Uh, We need a lot more desserts. Come on, dessert. Anybody in the chapel? Chapel dessert. Did I see your hand, David? Oh, oh, I seen you go like that, bro. I don't know what that meant, but yeah. All right, Sandra, thank you. God bless you. A couple more desserts. Hey, thank you, Ron. I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe two more desserts. You guys are awesome. Amen. 1030 drop-off time. Such a blessing to the family. Amen. So praise God. Thank you, guys. 1030, don't forget. And service will begin at 11 a.m. So we are a church, amen, in case you haven't noticed, that are made up of many ministries, Work, and we're working really, really hard not to make any above any other one. 
I was so excited last week when we launched, I don't know if you noticed, but I was so excited when we launched Ethan's Room, the Champions Club last week. That's awesome, amen. I know God's going to do some great things there. And, uh, but no ministry is above another. As a matter of fact, uh, I wrote down on my notes here, there's no club ministries here. No club ministries, amen. Uh, I think uh, Sergio used to say, uh, there's no, uh, you know, there's no cool club, amen. We're all in ministry together, amen, and um, which means that none of us is above each other, none of us are more important than each other, and we're all in this together. But there are many ministries that make Harbor Christian Center what Harbor Christian Center is, amen. So with the new year comes new vision. Can you say new vision? And I believe that we're ready to expand the tent stakes, amen, and to see God do some great things in 2024. How many are excited about 2024 besides Ethan? Ethan's giving me a thumbs up over there, amen. We started with Ethan's room last week, and, uh, and today I'm really happy to announce this, and we're going to show you a video in just a moment, but after a long purposeful journey... And uh, we're, we're ready to start, amen, an expansion of some of our ministries. And we're going to start today with Harbor Music, amen. Can we give it up for Harbor Music? Let's check out the state. Uh, turn your attention to the screen. We'll check out this video. For the past five years, our worship team has been on this journey of intentionally pursuing the presence of God. Back in 2019, I felt like God spoke to my heart and he said to take the plane higher. You know, God always wants to take us from glory to glory and strength to strength. And in the book of Revelation, the angel tells John to come up here, to come up higher so that John could see and hear things from a heavenly perspective. And I felt like that's what God wanted to do with our worship team. And so out of obedience to that word, we began to restructure the way we approached everything. We changed the way we approached practices, we changed the way we approached services, and we really wanted to posture our hearts to pursue His presence like never before. And from that pursuit of the presence, we began to see God do incredible things. And as we pursued Him, the natural overflow of that was then this desire for excellence. See, when we are worshiping the King of Kings, how can you not bring your best to Him? Amen. And so we began to, to do different things, to sharpen the gift within us, to reach greater levels of excellence. We formed Harbor Music. We started writing and recording and releasing our original songs. We had the opportunity to go out into our community and lead worship at different events. And we've just seen God do incredible things. When I look back at the last five years, I'm just in awe of what God has done in and through us. And so now, as we enter into 2024, I believe God wants to expand our capacity and increase our influence. We've had so many prophetic words about what God wants to do in and through our worship and our creative arts here at Harper Christian Center. But here's the thing, without vision, people perish. But without people, the vision perishes. Right now, there are 12 people on our worship team. And with that size, we've reached the limits of what we can do. And I believe God has spoken to our hearts about this new year and believing him for the size of our team to double. I'm believing him to go from 12 to 24 in the year 2024. And so you, church family, I would like to invite you in on this journey with us. There's two ways for you to be a part. First of all, you can pray. I believe all of us can pray. We need your prayers. Pray that those prophetic words and those promises will come to pass. Pray that God will bring the right people to our team. Pray for new songs and new creative ideas that will not only minister here in our local church, but around the world. I believe God wants to do that, and we want to invite you to pray those things through with us. And then secondly, it's people. You might be that person. I believe there are people sitting in our pews right now that God has chosen to be on this team. We're looking for keyboardists, electric guitarists, acoustic guitarists, bassists, drummers, vocalists, people who have a heart of worship and also the skill of music to be part of our team. As a worship team, we are on assignment to release the sights and sounds of heaven here on the earth. And so, church family, would you pray for us? And if God is tugging on your heart to be one of those 12, visit our website, harperchristiancenter.org worship for more information. 
We're so excited and expectant for what God is going to do this year. And we are so thankful that all of you are on this journey with us. Awesome. I love it. Amen. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. I'm super excited about that. Matter of fact, I sing pretty good in the shower, so I might just try out. <laughs> no, there is a process, amen. You can't, hey guys, you might sound really good in the shower, but that's a whole different thing, amen. But I know there's some talent in the house, and God's going to do it. And I believe that our team will be 24 and maybe even 36 by the end of the year. And so super excited about that. And um, if, you're, if that's you, go to our website, click on that little link, and uh, fill out that information. And uh, let's get excited about God doing some great things at Harbor Christian Center in 2024. Church is not a building. Can you say amen? amen. But a body, a body made up of people of all walks of life, from dis different seasons of life, all getting, where? To the other side. Amen. All getting to the other side. And maybe some of you are, have been asking this question, the other side of what? Amen. Maybe it's the other side of sickness. Maybe it's the other side of a broken relationship. Or maybe it's the other side of a, of a financial hardship or maybe an addiction or some struggle in your life. I think every one of us just just those five topics alone, every single one of us at one time or another have said, I want to get to the other side of this. Come on. Anybody know what, anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been sick in here? Anybody ever had a, a broken relationship, an addiction, and we want to get to the other side, and I believe God wants us to take people with us. Amen. Unless you're living your life in a bubble, amen. We're going to be constantly trying to get away from something and trying to get to the other side. Amen. So our verse is Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 39. And it says this. I'm going to read it again. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side. Let's say that together. Say it together. Say, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Amen. It says, so they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed, verse 37, but soon a fierce storm came up, uh, and high, wa high waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping in the back, or at the back of the boat, with his head on a cushion, the disciples woke him shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're, drowned? we're going to drown? And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, amen. Let's say that together right now. Say silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm, amen. What an amazing portion of scripture, amen. How many like the Bible, amen? You're in the wrong place if you don't like the Bible. I love the Bible, amen. I love the language of the Bible. I love that God is, um, is, a, is, is artistic, amen. He's poetic, and I just love the way the pages and the words of the Bible are put together, amen. So how many believe that God wants to get us to the other side? We just read it right now. He said, let's go. He didn't say, he didn't say just you go, but he said, let us go. And it means that we're not going alone, that Jesus is with us, amen. The NIV says that, that they took him along, leaving the crowds behind. Amen. I love that. His promise is that he is with us and that he's going to get us to the other side of whatever the fill in the blank of that is. Amen. So I don't know how long you've been in the boat or how big your storm is. You take him along, you leave the crowd behind, and he will calm the storm and get you to the other side. Can you say amen? It means that there's going to be a change or a shift from one location to another. And now is the time for the new and the next assignment from God. Amen. That's awesome. I love that. Amen. Well, today I want to break down. Uh, break down this verse a little bit. And I have a Bible program called Logos. Logos. 
and uh, which means, which, which is the, the, is that the Greek word for the written word, amen? And so um, uh, this program that I have is so amazing. You know, back in the day, we had, we, I had the library, you know, I had the Strongs, I had the Matthew Henrys, I had the, I had the Greek Bible, I had the Hebrew Bible, I had, the, I had this, all this collection of books. Now it's all right here, amen? It's in one little device, which is incredible, amen? But the one on my computer, I can right-click on a word, and it'll give me hundreds, literally hundreds of definitions uh, from the original language and commentaries. It's amazing. I love it, amen? But I want to break down Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And uh, just a couple of words for us this morning, and hopefully it makes as much sense to you as it did to me as I was like a little kid in a candy store writing, typing this stuff out, amen? So in the Living, New Living Translation, it starts by saying, as evening came, as evening came, the New King James and the NIV version says, when evening came, when evening came. So right-clicking on evening I found the meaning of what evening means, amen? Anybody want to know what evening means? Evening means evening. Amen. I'm just kidding, amen. Actually, there's actually two different times of the day or, time, or evenings for the Jewish people. One was at 3 p.m. to sunset, which was the early evening. And the other one was after dark, and they called that the late evening, Amen. And in this particular verse that we're reading today, Mark chapter 4, the word evening used there is the late evening, amen? This is the time of day. Come on, are you ready? Are you ready for the revelation? This is the time of day when you kick off your shoes. Come on, somebody. When you put on your PJs, amen? <laughs> when you surrender your life to rest, amen? When you lay your life down. Amen. It's the time of day where you surrender. Everybody say surrender. So here's the first point of the day. If we're going to get to the other side, the first thing we have to do is give up. Come on, somebody. The first thing we have to do is surrender. See, the one thing that God asks of us all is to surrender our life to him. You know, when you gave your life to Jesus you literally did that, amen? When you said that prayer 30 years ago or 40 years ago or 10 years ago or last week or whenever it was, you literally gave your life to Jesus. Anybody pray that prayer where you say, God, come into my life. I surrender to you. I make you the Lord of my life, amen? So God asks all of us to surrender our life to him. So the first thing we have to do, if we're going to get to the other side of our sickness, the other side of our broken relationship, the other side of our financial situation, the other side of our struggles, is we have to surrender. Come on. You got to get into the deep end, and you got to just let God take over. Amen. Amen. Because we try and we try, and we try, and we try. Anybody ever tried before? And we never quite get there. Amen. So God's not asking us to get to the other side or to go at it on our own. That's good news. Amen. We don't go at it on our own. He never just sent us and said, good luck. I hope you get 12 by the end of the year. He didn't just send us and say, good luck, I hope you get there, I hope everything turns out. He wants to take us to the other side, amen? But we have to let go, amen, to, 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 in order to get to the other side, we have to not just let's go, but let go, amen? We got to let go to get to the other side. What he calls us to is he calls us to faith. And he calls us to trust. If you're, not, if you're not walking in faith and you're not trusting God, I want to say it's kind of harsh, but you're not in God's will. He wants us to, 
to walk in faith. He wants us to believe him. He wants us to trust him. Hey, we don't walk by, by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're trusting in God. Hey, I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what the next step is. All I know is my life is surrendered to God. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to have faith in him. And I know that he's going to, that he is faithful and he's going to get me to the other side. So let go, amen? It says, as evening came, when evening came. You know what Jesus was telling them? Are you ready to give up? Are you ready to surrender? Are you ready to lay your life down? Are you ready to put your trust in me? Are you ready to let go? Come on, that was a question, guys. Say, yes, I'm ready. (laughs) Now let's go to the other side. So now we get in the boat, amen? And the next word I right-clicked on is actually two words. It started out, started out. It's in the New Living Translation. And just in case you want to know, it's the Greek word number for that is 4161. And it means this, to bring along with. It means to take aside. It means to learn from somebody or someone. It means to welcome. It means to receive. It means to receive an assignment. And it means to be taught by. You know what Jesus is saying in this verse? He's saying, I want you to surrender your life. I want you to let go so that we can go to the other side. I want you to trust me. I want you to have faith in me. I want you to believe me for the impossible. I want you to trust me in every, with every row. And I want you to start out, amen? I want you to learn from someone. Who is he talking about? He's talking about himself. Verse 36, so they took Jesus in the boat and they started out. They started to learn. They started to grow. They started to gather information from the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So you, so you let go to let's go. Amen. First you have to let go to let's go. And then you start out. See, now, now you're ready to learn. Now you're ready to be taught. Now you're ready to receive your assignment. Everybody say, let's go. Let's go. Amen. That didn't really make me want to go anywhere, amen. So everybody say, let's go. let's go. Come on, later on today as you're watching your favorite football team, you're going to be yelling at the TV. Come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Some of you won't be yelling at the TV because your team didn't make it to the playoff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, a, that's low, amen. Right? I watched a, a video. I don't know if it was a YouTube or I don't know nothing about the TikTok or whatever it was. And it was, a, it was a wife who made a bingo card out of all the things her husband does while he's watching the cowboy game. And so she's sitting there watching him and like, he's like, come on. She crosses out the egg. She, she gets him like this. She crosses out the X, amen. He gets mad. He gets up and he walks into the next room, amen. So she crosses until she says, bingo, because she knew it was going to happen every time, amen. (laughs) Uh, I don't got time for jokes. Come on, guys. I got to get, I got to get to. So they start out, meaning now you're ready to, to learn, Now you're ready to be taught. Now you're ready to receive your assignment. You're ready to let's go, amen? You know that you can have the greatest talent. You can be the smartest, most educated person in the entire world. You can be named the most likely to succeed, but if you're not willing to to be taken aside, if you're not willing to submit to the master, if you're not willing to come under the teacher with a capital T, his name is Jesus, and learn and receive, all that talent will be a waste. Matthew verse, chapter 11, verse 38, 
28 to 30 says, then Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. Let me teach you. Come on, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear. The burden and the burden I give you is light. It's light. We got to be, I wrote down, you got to be coachable. Amen. I was, a, I had the, I don't know if it's a privilege or not, because some of you will boo right now, but I was a chaplain for San Pedro High School football for 10 years. Amen. And I saw a lot of talent. Amen. And I saw a lot of talent and I had a lot of conversation with coaches. And I remember coach telling me, that guy right there, he has so much talent. He has so much gifting. He could be the greatest at the greatest. But guess what? He's not coachable. And because he's not coachable, he will never go anywhere in his career in football. We have to be coachable. And I'm talking about who, who's our coach. His name is Jesus. Come on. He wants to coach us. He wants to teach us. He wants us to lay our life down to him, surrender to him so that we can learn from him. The word coachable means capable of being easily taught and trained to do something better. Amen. So you know that we're really stubborn? Come on. We're really stubborn when it comes to changing our ways. Amen. Come on. I mean, we'll be honest and say, I'm really stubborn and change. I have my methods already. I have my way. Don't move my toothbrush. It belongs on the left-hand side. Put the cap back on the toothpaste when you're done. We're really stubborn when it comes to... Ch my wife's going to have my toothbrush on the other side of the bathroom for saying that. We're stubborn when it comes to changing our ways. But God wants us to be teachable. He wants us to be coachable. Getting to the other side is learning how to surrender, learning how to trust, and learning how to learn. He wants to give us a new way to think, a new way to talk, a new way to act. He wants to give us his way, amen, his way. Mark 4, they let go to let's go. They surrendered to God, and then they started out. They were ready to learn. They were ready to receive, to be taught by Jesus, and, to be, and ready to be coached, amen. I want you to know today that we are all on a journey Amen. We're getting to the other side. Amen. God wants to take us to the other side. But just because we're on our way, just because we're surrendered, and just because we're ready to learn, doesn't mean that there's not going to be obstacles. The very, verse, the very next verse, verse 37, says, But soon a fierce storm came up. Amen. Soon a fierce storm came up. I think it was like 1991. That was a long time ago, huh? So Marissa wasn't even born yet, amen? That's how long ago it was. But I went on a three-day backpack hiking trip. Yeah, it was awesome. But back then, there was no GPS. I didn't have an iPhone. My pager was about this big, amen? It was like about that big. Oh, I got a page, <laughs> all right? Anybody remember the size of a VCR, your, your pager? <laughs> And all we had was a flat paper map. When I say flat, <laughs> it was just flat. And so we chose a trail. It was over by Combic Lake in the High Sierras. And uh, our plan was to start there and then go to Lake Dorothy. It was only like this long on the map. <laughs> Amen. Actually, it was a five-mile hike. And so I thought, man, we could probably do that in a couple of hours, amen? So, of course, we, 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 uh, we did all our homework and got our packs together and got our supplies together. And, you know, my wife took me shopping and she bought me, she said, why don't you take this and why don't you take that and you should put this in there and you might need this, amen? And so I had a 50-pound pack, <laughs> And we started out on this, on this, on this five-mile hike, this journey to get to the other side, amen? 
I learned really quick that my pack was way too heavy, amen? I started thinking, man, is my wife trying to get rid of me, amen? I'm going to fall off this cliff with this pack, amen? And uh, we started out really good, but it took us, the two-hour, five-mile hike took us 11 hours. And we never made it to Lake Dorothy, amen? We stopped at a lake called Mildred Lake about one mile short of Lake Dorothy, amen, and I was so happy when we got there, amen. <laughs> I mean, it was taking that pack off and setting up our tent, and it was just a relief, amen, to get there. And, um, you know, because, because we didn't have GPS or Google Maps or any of that stuff, it was flat on the map, but man, it was like this for real, amen. <laughs> and there was portions of it where I was literally on a cliff, and I was like walking with this 50-pound pack, amen. <laughs> And I, I remember some of us were saying, you know, I got, my, I got my house on my back. I'll stop right here and just camp right here, amen? I'm not going any further, amen? But why am I saying that? Because to get to the other side, there's always going to be challenge. There's always going to be some, some obstacle in your way, something to slow you down. I'll never forget when we're walking on the side of this mountain, a jet flew by, a military jet I looked and I saw the pilot, amen, and he looked at me like, what are you doing on the side of this mountain, amen, literally, amen, crazy. <laughs> the next day, a, a guy comes with a little tiny pack, little tiny day pack, little fanny pack. He walks up and he's like, where's your guys' mules at? <laughs> I go, mules? Man, I carried that on my back. I'm the mule, amen. He said, you carried all this stuff on your back. He said, this is the worst trail in the John Muir, John Muir trails or whatever. He said, if you could do this trail, you could do any trail, amen. He goes, I thought you guys were the guys that cleaned the trail, amen, like are going around. It was so funny, amen. But, but soon... A fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. You know, even when we surrender, even when we're trusting, even when we're walking by faith and not by sight, even when we're coming under the master's teaching, how many know the storm still comes, amen? The obstacle still comes. Verse 38 says, and Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. I love, I love the language of the Bible. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When you surrender, you submit. It doesn't mean there won't be any challenges or any obstacles. I, I, I found another story towards the beginning of the week was about President Jefferson. He sent two guys out to get to the West Coast in 1804, Lewis and Clark. Any history people in here today? You guys got to go back to school, amen. It's uh, Lewis and Clark. They went up the Missouri River, right? They were told that when they got to the end of the river, they, they literally rode upstream. When they got to the end of the river, the water would flow the other direction. And it would be smooth sailing all the way down to the Pacific Ocean, Sounds good, right? Sounds like my flat map, amen. <laughs> but instead, on August 12th, 1805, they got to the mouth of the river, and what they saw in front of them wasn't a river flowing the other direction. What they saw was the Rocky Mountains, <laughs> amen. They saw this enormous mountain range in front of them, no river. And now instead of rowing up river, they had to carry their canoes, all the way the next, I don't know how many miles, amen. Soon a fierce storm came. High waves breaking into the boat. Water filling the boat. And Jesus asleep in the back. You know, I just had this revelation. I'm sure that Jesus was asleep. It's what the Bible says, amen. I picture Jesus back there with one eye open. Let's see what these guys are going to do. He's like, he's like, you know, he's like looking with one eye, like, let's see what John's going to do. Let's see what Peter's going to do. Let's see how they act when the storm comes right now. Because you know Jesus wasn't worried about a thing. 
I believe that he was there just looking at them. Let's see what these guys do. And he does it with us too. Come on, let's see if they're going to keep trusting. Let's see if they're going to keep on believing. Let's see if they're going to keep shouting. Let's see if they're going to keep swimming and jumping in the, in the pool of God, in the spirit of God. And let's see if they're going to keep on keeping on. And what did they say? Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Verse 39. And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silent, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. The rest of those verse, verse 40 to 41, it says, then, they asked, then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, the disciples were absolutely terrified. You know what they said? Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this man? So what does this verse say? You let go so that you can let's go to the other side. You surrender to God. You start out. You're ready to learn. You're ready to receive. You're ready to be taught by Jesus. You're ready to be coached. Hey, obstacles and challenges are going to come. You get to the end of the river and you hit the Rocky Mountains. Amen. And here's the last point of the day. You got to know who's in your boat with you. Tell your neighbor, you got to know who's in the boat with you. These guys, they didn't know. They said, who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, sometimes I think we know the devil more than we know God. Come on, say amen or ouch, amen. John 10 says, 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy you know, we take that verse and we're like, oh my gosh, he's going to kill me. He's going to destroy me. He's going to steal everything from me. But do you know that this is what I felt the Lord tell me this week. The devil can only do two things. He can't kill you. That only God has the power of life and death and our tongue. Amen. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The devil has no power to destroy you. He has no power to destroy you. The only two things the devil can do is lie and steal. He's a liar and he's a thief, amen? He's a liar and the father of lies. He's a liar from the very beginning. And here's what I wanted to close with today. The biggest lie, or the big lies are, here's the biggest lie from the enemy. You're not going to make it to the other side. It's the biggest lie from the enemy. You're not going to make it to the other side. You're going to sink in the storm. You should have never surrendered to God. He doesn't even care about you because he's asleep in the back of the boat. So the best way to deal with a lie is to replace it with truth. And don't, this is what the Lord told me, I don't know. He said, don't worry about binding the devil. I felt, I felt the Lord show me this. I don't know. I just, uh, maybe it was me. But I felt, the, I felt I'm, I'm, devil, I bind you. And the devil's like, I'm already bound. What are you binding me? I'm like, That's not doing nothing. Huh? He's already bound. He's already a defeated foe. Jesus, amen, whipped him 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. And, and we're not at that point where he's released and all that stuff in Revelation or whatever. So don't worry about binding the devil. He's already bound. He's a defeated foe. You know what we need to do? We need to get to the truth. We need to get to the truth of what does God say. If he says you're never going to get to the other side of your sickness, then you say Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed, amen. When he says you're never gonna get on the other side of your broken relationship, Ephesians 4.32 says, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. If you 
when he tells you that you're never going to get to the other side of your financial hardship, hey, you tell him Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. When he tells you you're never going to get free from that addiction, you tell him Luke 4.18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. When he tells you you're never going to get to the other side of your struggle, you tell him Isaiah 43 verse 2 and 3, when I pass through the water, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You're going to get to the other side. Come on, you're going to the other side. Amen. You just got to let go and let's go. Amen. You got to surrender to God. You got to start out. You got to be ready to learn, ready to receive, ready to re be taught by Jesus, ready to be coached. And yes, obstacles and challenges are going to come. You're going to get to the end of the river. You're going to hit the Rockies. But you know who's in your boat. You know who's with you in your boat. Come on. He's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life, and he is Jesus. Amen. And he will bring you to the other side. Amen. The other side. I love the Bible. I feel like I could just read it, and that's enough. Amen. How many are ready? I'm ready to lay down, surrender. When evening came, I'm ready to be taught by him, God. Whatever you want to show me, whatever you want to put inside of me, I'm ready to trust you and walk in faith. I don't care what comes against me. I know who's in my boat. The devil is a liar. He's a liar and a thief. Both bad words, or used to be bad words. God's going to get us to the other side. You just got to replace that lie with the truth. Why don't we all stand to our feet this morning? As a matter of fact, yeah. Everybody say, let's go. Wait, wait, let's, let's say it the, the right way. Let go. Let go. Now let's go. let's go. Everybody say, I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to speak the truth. I'm ready to get to the other side. In, in honor of Martin Luther King Day tomorrow, I have two quotes from him. From him. He, that man was the greatest preacher man of faith, amazing man of God. Sadly, they distort some of the things that he said and did, but he said this, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. He also said, faith is taking the step even when you don't see the whole staircase. That's faith. That's faith. I want us to pray. I'm going to invite the worship team to come. And um, I want you to just lift your hands right now. And I, I pray that what I shared with you, that you catch it, that you grab hold of it, that it encourage you today, that it lift you up, that it, that it just causes you say, to say, I'm going to just keep on rowing. I'm going to keep on climbing. I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on confessing. I'm going to keep on speaking the truth. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask this team to just lead us, take us back into that moment of worship that we had at 930 or so. And we're going to dismiss like that. We're going to just send you off in the pool. Amen.
Not in the shallow end, but in the deep end, amen. So let me pray, Father, I pray for us, Harbor Christian Center, as we're starting week number two of this fast. And we're declaring, God, we're gonna get to the other side. I pray for you today. I pray for you, 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 you today and me. That our faith, that our trust, that we'll go up another notch today. That we would surrender to God. Whatever it is, we have to surrender to Him. That we would trust Him, that we would walk in faith. That we would start out, that we would say, God, teach me. God, I'm ready for my assignment. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to sit under, submit under the teacher. God, when the obstacle comes, when the lies come, when the enemy comes, God, today we recognize that you're in our boat. And because you're in our boat, we have the truth with us. And the truth always sets us free. Truth always prevails. You want to get rid of a lie? You speak the truth. So we speak the truth to every circumstance, God. Our struggles, our addictions, our broken relationships, our financial hardships, everything we go through, God, every struggle today, God, we know your promise is you're going to get us to the other side. And today, we're going deep, God. We're diving in, we're jumping in the deep end. I don't want to touch the bottom, God. I don't want my feet to reach the bottom. I want to trust you, God. I want to be immersed in your presence, God. In Jesus' name. And just before we go into this moment of worship, if you're here, if somebody invited you or you don't know Jesus today, I want to just give you an opportunity before we say amen to give your life to God. If you're here and you want a fresh start with him, I want you to just slip your hand up really quick. Don't want to embarrass anybody. Don't want to, God bless you. I see that hand right there. Anybody else that would say yes to Jesus this morning? God bless you. I see that other hand back there too. Bless you guys. We're going to say a very simple prayer. And we're going to say it all together. Can we do that? Can we just say, dear Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my life for the first time or the thousandth time. I surrender my life to you. I submit to you, God, as the Lord and Savior of my life. And today, I'm going in the deep end. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. We love you guys. Team, would you worship? Would you, would you take us into that moment? If you got to go, hey, thank you for being here today. Don't forget tonight at 7 o'clock, but let them, let them, let's take us into that moment right now. In Jesus' name.